It's like if I cut off your arm and I cut off your other arm and cut off your leg and I cut off your whole body, like you're getting more and more debilitated. This is a very good question. That's scary, but... And I've thought about this question before too. Looking forward to your answer. Father Boltz asks, are a person's particular parents the necessary material cause, i.e. particular sperm and egg, for their existence? Or is it ontologically possible for a person to have different parents? In other words, and I know you know this, but just so I can flesh it out, mm. if your parents didn't exist, is it possible that Plato, Alex Plato, the man I call Alex Plato, mm. could have existed in a different body somewhere at some yeah. time? I guess I have conflicting intuitions about that. Um, I mean, it, 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 I mean, our, our anthropology is going to have yeah. some play here, and that's what gets in, engaged in this discussion. Yeah. So, I mean, one way that, say, Scotus and Aquinas and Bonham should think about the person, the person is the composite of the soul and the body, right? Yes. It's properly a name for that composite. So if you had yeah. a different body, you yes. wouldn't be you. Yes, but on the other hand, like, the, the person the person is is transcends that composite. It's not just merely, right, the sum of those parts, right? It's like a more fundamental principle, like God creates, right, the soul out of nothing, right? And the body is there too, right? And so it's, there's some act of God that's individualized, right? So there's a, a, a what do I call it? Maybe an individual essence, I could say, right? So the, yes, there's a kind of thing we are that's a human, but then it's like an individual essence there. So if I understand person in the one sense, it seems like you've got to have the parents you had, right? But if I understand it to be sort of this particular thing that God creates, right, mm. then it seems like I can imagine that with a different, yeah. a different body. I don't see why God had to make my soul connected to this body. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. So I, I take it, it's the, the ambiguity of the idea of a person, mm. right? So um, like maybe we could reflect on the separation of the soul and body, right? So when the soul goes, right, there's no body, but Presumably, mm -hmm. like if we, if we just assert that that survives existence, is that a person? Mm -hmm. No. Um, so in one sense, no. Right. <clears throat> but on the other side, we want to say as well, like half well, a person. Well, something. That seems weird to say it's half a person, but it's not completely a person, not person in the proper respect of that person. But it is, is, it, is it you? That's yes. a good question. Because yes. maybe it's not you. Yeah. So it seems, to it, me, it seems to me like whatever it is, it bears the individuality, mm. right? That is what we align with person. Yeah. So to me, I like thinking of it that way. It's, it's good. your, you are, you have a soul there. So the you, the individuality part is still the same before and after death, right? It didn't go away or get mm. reduced, but it's activities and powers and potentialities are all limited now because there's no body. It's like, if I cut off your arm and I cut off your other arm and cut off your leg and I cut off your whole body, like you're getting more and more debilitated, mm -hmm. right? So Can we also make that a short. Where, where he says that if I cut off your arm and I cut off your arm and I cut off your leg and I cut off your just make that it's like a three second clip I want to see <laughs> all right thanks so much for watching please like if you liked and if you loved subscribe